So, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is I want to show you. Um, I think I think this might help some of you out if you guys are having trouble a little bit with. Uh, I think if you guys are having a little bit of trouble with um, uh, this type of graph, what we're what I'm going to do is kind of go over um, how we're going to be able to find our solutions not only on a unit circle but also with the graph. So, anyways, if I was going to solve this, we can solve this fairly simple here: two cosine of x equals one. Divide by 2, divide by 2, cosine of x equals 1 half. OK? Not so bad, right? Now, what I'm going to, what I am going to do now, Kyle, is I am going to I'll solve this by using the unit circle. Real quick, I'll do that up here. Um, by using the unit circle, you have to know your, obviously what the unit circle of those points are. Well, cosine equals 1 half, we hopefully, we know that that is going to be the angle, <coughs> pi over 3, because that point is um, 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Right? OK, I'm kind of going through the unit circle a little bit quicker for you, because I'm assuming that you guys have at least this first quadrant. However, that's not the only point, not the only time. It's also a reflection over the x-axis. At this pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, that angle is also going to be 5 pi over 3. All right? So if I asked you, if I asked you to find all the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, that means all the solutions that are between pretty much in one revolution of your unit circle, you guys would agree that pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 are those two solutions. Can I get at least some yeah. nods? OK, so everybody understands that. <laughs> now, when everybody starts seeing me do all these coterminal angles, a lot of you like start freaking out. You're like, that gets a little confusing, right? So one way to help you out with that is let's go back to graphing. OK? So let's go ahead and graph our function cosine of x, all right? Now remember, cosine, you don't have to, you know, you can just use this on a calculator um, as well. But if you guys remember, cosine of x, um, that's going to be our parent function. So it's going to go up to 1, down to negative 1. We have an x scale of pi over 4. So let's have pi over 4, pi halves, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. OK, and if you guys remember, we'll start at our maximum. Go down. Oh, that's 1, negative 1. Now that is one period, right? Remember, the period is the distance it takes the graph to repeat its cycle. The period for the cosine graph is 2 pi. It's like us going all the way around a circle. All right. Now again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to determine when is cosine of x equal 1 half. So what I can do is draw a line at 1 half. So if that's 1 and that's 0, we know 1 half would be right there. Now, yes? Isn't that 3 pi over 4? Yes, it is 3 pi over 4. Thank you. So what we notice is that this, hap this intersection happens twice. Right? Now, I know my graph might not be the best in the world, but that intersection happens at <coughs> pi over 3 and at 5 pi over 3. All right? So if you were guys to look at this, that's the exact same thing as our solutions. That's where our <laughs> cosine works. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, that's only between 0 and 2 pi. Right? What if I said I want you to find all the solutions? Well, we have an issue now because this graph is never, ever going to stop. <coughs> right? It's never going to stop. Well, guess what? Do you think the solutions then are going to stop either? No, they're just going to keep on going. So the reason why we say plus 2 pi is because you guys can see, obviously, that's my next solution. You can see, obviously, that's the next solution. There's a solution. There's a solution. So if I'm at, if I'm at this solution and I want to be able to determine what the next one is, 
look at what do you think the distance is to pi. And they go from this solution to that solution. Look at what the distance, what does that distance look like? 2 pi. So that's why we add 2 pi to each one of these. All right. So do you guys understand for this blue why we can see those are the two solutions between 0 and 2 pi? I just want you to find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. But if I say find all the solutions, you are just going to have to keep on adding 2 pi. And we can add 2 pi. You could say that would be adding 2 pi once, 2 pi twice, 2 pi three times. And you say, all right, enough with it. I can't keep on counting. So we're just going to add 2 pi r times. Does that make sense to people? A little bit? Kind of? Maybe? Okay. So that's how we can use the graphs to help us kind of